Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 17th episode of the ICA Cricket Show. After two big tours of England and Australia, the Indian women's team is now in New Zealand for a short limited over series, but one which would serve as a perfect preparation for the big one, the World Cup, which is also to be played in New Zealand for next month. The Indians kick off the tour with the T20 International next Wednesday and follow it up with a three-match ODI series. To discuss India's chances on this tour and how it would be ideal preparation for the World Cup, which follows, we have put together an interesting panel and I, for one, am looking forward to hearing their views. Sonia David, CTM Suguna and Sharda Shivran, it's a pleasure having you all. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sonia, who is based in Pune and very much into coaching these days, is a former India player who, very interestingly, back in 2016, picked up a crucial 3 for 14 against Pakistan, which helped India qualify for the 2016 T20 World Cup. That was in Bangladesh, Sonia? Uh, yes, it was in Bangladesh. It was 2014. 14. Oh, sorry. I stand correct. And Sonia, of course, since that, apart from coaching, she's dabbled in cricket writing and been on quite a few cricket panels. Good to have you on board, Sonia. Thank you. Our next panelist is the first time for me as well as this show. You know, we have never had an IAS officer retired or serving. This is always the first time they say. Suguna, who is also called Bobs, and it's a long story she says, has turned off for Tamil Nadu and South Zone as an all rounder. But in life away from cricket, she's been even more of an all rounder. Having served as principal secretary to the government of Odisha, principal secretary to the government of Odisha, Suguna was also had a short stint as sports secretary, continues to do a bit for society. And she's currently the General Secretary, Indian Red Cross Society, Odisha Branch. How you fit all this into one life and yet find time to join us is beyond me, Suguna. We're indeed honored to have you here. Thank you. Our third panelist is also a former Tamil Nadu player like Suguna, though they played in different eras. She too is a true all-rounder, a certified BCCI Level 1 coach and currently coaching at the TNC Academy. Shada is a cricket analyst and features regularly in cricket shows. Dada, I saw your LinkedIn page and another post about the show with Sabah, Karim and W. Raman. Interesting. You seem to have quite a good time that day. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction, Satish. Yes, I really enjoyed speaking with uh, such stalwarts of cricket. It was a very insightful uh, session for me. Yeah, you know, Sabah was in our last panel and I've been after W. to come on board too. So far, I've not managed to stay alone. And of course, when uh, Shada is not busy talking cricket, she goes back to a day job of a company secretary with the Tatas. Uh, Shada, ICA could use someone like you. A pleasure and welcome to you to this show and all of you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. So, you know, let me start with you. Uh, given your busy schedule, tell us, have you managed to keep in touch with the game? Have you followed the recent Indian tours of England and Australia, for example? And given the obvious struggles women cricket has been through, you know, from the day you started, to reach where it has now, how, how happy are you with the progress made? Honestly speaking, I have uh, been in touch with cricket, uh, women's cricket, but uh, not on a uh, regular basis. Okay. But uh, I have been keeping tab of all the uh, happenings in the ICA and, you know, the players and the selection and everything else. And uh, the recent Australian uh, tournament too, and the performance of some of our uh, youngsters. So the team that has now been selected for the uh, one-off and for the uh, New Zealand on ODIs, the World Cup, I think it's a very balanced team as far as I'm concerned. And uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I have not met any of the youngsters. I have been far away from the cricket field for quite some time, though I was in the cricket scenario till 2008 until WCI merged with BCCI. I used to play a lot of cricket with the men and the IAs and IPS officers. Otherwise, I have been, yes, keeping tab of our women's cricket in general. And I can share my uh, views with you as and when, you know, the topic comes up. How happy are you with the progress that women's cricket has made? Huh? Oh, wonderful. I mean, it is unbelievable from when we started. There's hardly mm -hmm. any, anything called, uh, you know, anything at all for us. We just started playing cricket for the heck of it. And we got thrown out of all the uh, big stadia. Mm -hmm. And then they also gave or called us all kinds of names. So we used to play the corporation ground and then travel by a third class sleeper without reservation. And it was one big ruckus there. But then from there on till today, what I have seen people, the girls give, being given this kind of a facility, a lot of uh, 
you know, endorsements, a lot of payments and everything else. I think it's an extraordinary jump from where we started. And uh, I think that is itself, that in itself should be a reason why we should be doing much better. And I think, uh, I think it's really gone a long, long way. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, uh, I think BCCI taking over has been great news. And, uh, you know, now we have our representatives also, the ICI has representatives in the BCCI. So a lot of changes will continue to happen. It's, it's great to see you know, where women's cricket has reached. And hopefully performances have, have they've started coming in. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for that, uh, Sonia. Uh, Sonia, uh, great, isn't it? The girls are actually getting to play in new series in New Zealand, just ahead of the World Cup there. You know, okay, I agree. There might have been a bubble longer than any other team, but actual match experience, nothing can beat that, can it? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, when you have series uh, just before the World Cup in the same place where you are going to play the World Cup, it's definitely going to help the team because uh, the same thing happened when I played that last T20 World Cup. We had a T20 series in Bangladesh and immediately the World Cup started. So it definitely helps because playing, of course, playing in Bangladesh and playing in New Zealand is a lot different. And I'm sure this series will uh, help our players, you know, get acclimatized more to the conditions over there and get used to that uh, conditions playing over there. I just wanted to add one thing what Shuguna ma'am was saying. Fortunate, I was fortunate enough that I could play in the WCI era or BCCI era as well. So it definitely has a lot of changes uh, in both the eras. And I was, I actually will tell you that I had fun playing in both the eras, you know. Experiencing, uh, I remember uh, speaking about Chetbok man said, I remember I played, uh, went to Chennai for the interzonals and we were practicing outside Chetbok Stadium where those practice wickets are. Okay. And uh, we were just going to see the, enter the stadium and we were told oh, we are not allowed to go there. And then the, these girls are now playing in that stadium. It's really a good exactly. thing to see. That's right. Great. You know, uh, it, these, these stories that uh, we, Keep hearing it. This is what make the current generation also actually realize, you know, what yeah. how people have gone through. Now that, that's always the case, and obviously the next generation will, will also be following this current yeah. generation. That's they'll have their own stories. Uh, Shada, this this particular New Zealand tour. What areas do you think? You know, this, I mean, forget the T20 one of T20 because the World Cup is the ODI World Cup. What areas would the Indian team be looking to address ahead of the World Cup? What, in your opinion, they should address? Uh, definitely, the Indian team can be open to a lot of experimentation. You know, it's a five-match ODA series, so that gives room to try out a lot of combinations, especially in the three match. order. Three match, Shadi. I don't think it's five matches. It's, five a, matches. it's a, it's a oh, five match. Okay. Yeah, it's a five match. Okay. So, you know, yeah, it yeah. Uh, gives room to a lot of experimentation, you know, especially... Uh, I definitely believe that the Indian uh, team uh, needs to work on their running between the wickets. Uh, in the and scoring of runs in the middle overs, you know, uh, often it's very common to see that you know nowadays uh, Shafali Verma and Smriti Mandana are getting us off to a flyer, and you know after the 15th over when the first wicket falls, you know it's between the 15th to you know 35th over, you know that that is the stage where in the initial uh, you know the last two tours our run rate has dropped down you know to three 3.5. In competitive cricket, especially in uh, tournaments like the World Cup, where you are going to be facing teams like England and Australia, the middle overs need you need to score a lot of uh, runs very briskly. So the run rate needs to be somewhere at five or five point five. You know, for the uh, middle order, you know, someone like a Harman Preet Kaur to come in and utilize the batting power play, and you know, to put up huge scores like two seventy and two eighty on the board, which will add pressure to the opposition. So. I think one area where the girls really need to improve is, you know, uh, the running between the wickets, you know, pushing for the second run and the pace at which they score in the uh, middle overs. So those things definitely, you know, I I'm sure it will be uh, uh, something to work upon with the coach and the players. I'm sure they will be having a lot of plans. And the other thing which I found striking was, you know, uh, the performance of the spinners and the fields to which they bowl. Now, the two spinners mm -hmm. who are going to be bowling, you know, whether it's Rajeshwari Gekwad, Poonam Yadav, and even Deepthi Sharma, we have a lot of variety, you know, but in New Zealand with these smaller square boundaries, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, you know, the field set is going to be and what the plans of the spinners are going to be. So, if the uh, Indian team management can experiment a bit in these areas, in the ODA series, you know, that will showcase 
uh, the depth that we have and you know it will also help us to assess the right combination going for going into such a huge tournament as the world cup yes sugana you want to say something in fact i quite agree with what uh, sharda has been saying and we have shafali going bang 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 you know and then if shafali fails and then we have uh, we have to depend entirely on mitali to come maybe you know one down or two down and see how she progresses god forbid mitali does not fail if mitali fails then we are in a lot of soup and that is that is a time where we need our uh, middle order maybe dipti can do some kind of a uh, uh, can hold a uh, hold one side but the problem there is now the run rate the run rate has been reducing very drastically you know once shafali leaves and mitali leaves and then it is left to deepthi and the middle order a low middle order to uh, to go up in many phases eight to last eight to 10 overs at that point of time like she rightly said shabda the run rate is really falling and we need people to take over the 10 overs because deepthi i'm not too sure has this capacity of really going all out you know and scoring you know eight runs and over or 10 runs and over in the last eight to 10 uh, overs that is one but then so having said that smriti has been in the mix of runs shafali has been in the mix of runs and i think uh, mitali has done an extraordinary work in batting that part are uh, spinners i have watched punam sp uh, spinning around you know so much and i think that girl is going to be one of our major strengths uh, in our uh, approach to the world cup the only area of anxiety only anxiety that i have i may be wrong totally is in our with the medium pacers medium pacers we have jolan yes certainly a lot of experience but the other two are rather are rather new to the whole uh, scenario i think megna and uh, renuka are newcomers or megna has one odi experience that is where i thought maybe a, a person like sika who's more experienced ought to have been in the in the team to support jhulan and having uh, this kind of a time two to three years we should have had a backup you know op pacer to take the place of jhulan if she's really going to be in the last uh, world cup we should have groomed somebody and right as of now megna and renuka i hope they do well they have done well in the domestic series i have noticed but uh, how far it is really going to uh, be successful is something we'll have to see and the first five matches will really speak a lot before the world cup yeah, uh, sonia would you tend to agree because both yeah. of them actually talking about our spinners is yeah. interesting and we are playing uh, actually, in new zealand i have a different point to add to the uh, improvement areas i think fielding area is one thing which we actually because um, what i've heard that it's uh, in new zealand it's very windy and it it, it gets difficult to judge those high catches uh, so that is the area my they might be working more on uh, in new zealand on uh, when they are play, going to play the new zealand series and definitely i agree to suguna ma'am and sharda as well the in between you know the run rate in between 15 to 35 overs so i think uh, if they are i'm sure they will be focusing more on that uh, and for that more of strike rotation should be happening i feel uh, in those overs what about the pacers uh, sorry I think Having been on yourself, I know yeah. Megna and Renuka. You know, in Australia, they created actually quite an impression. There, yeah. there were a lot of people talking. Smithy has, in fact, gone on record saying that you know we were so excited to we could give back the Australians, you know, in their own coin. Yeah. And Australians have actually placed this thing. So the, I I differ a little bit, Suguna, here on that part. But you you are the experts. I mean, you have been watching these girls. So Shika being dropped, yes, is a big thing. So the, the call the selectors have made, and Robin Shaw, the coach, has tried to explain it in his own way and all that. But what is your view, Sonia? Shika should have been there, and what is your view on these youngsters coming in? Uh, I think uh, dropping like Shika getting dropped, yeah, that it was a bit of surprise, definitely. But when you are, if you are going to compare Shika and Pooja Vastrakar, Pooja Vastrakar has. more bit of batting than shikha and i i think that's where the area where uh, pooja is being you know more consistent as well in uh, in a batting and she can hit those big uh, sixes or like get those runs quickly as well apart from that uh, megna and uh, renuka singh and pooja vasrakar did fair job in england as well as in australia so they are very uh, impressive and having this new zealand series before the world cup i'm sure they will be more uh, used uh, in those The series well, you know, we had discussed few year, uh, few months back about 
uh, bowling having four paces. So that this is the one experiment which uh, they can also do in the New Zealand series. Yeah. Experimenting, experimenting before a World Cup, isn't it a little risky, uh, Sonia? Uh, yeah. See, this is the series. Unfortunately, they are having uh, these spaces in this series. But one good part is that they are, they will know how they are going to be uh, approaching the World Cup before the series. So that, that's the thing uh, they can uh, do in that New Zealand series. Yeah, like yeah, Charles. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, see, pace is going to play a in possibly even swing in New Zealand is going to play its part because the wickets will be like that, you know, conditions are going to be. So spinners will, will have a role, obviously, but I think the pacers will be the key. And I think the, the uh, Suguna, what has been happening is they've been talking about it for quite some time that we don't have enough pace in the pacers. You know, that is what they've been trying to address uh, with the team. So they've taken a call and it's a bold step, I, I think. Hopefully it will pay off. That's right. But now, uh, moving moving from that, uh, the batting part, uh, Sharda, you know, Jeremiah, Jeremiah has been dropped. You know, that has been in the offing, she's been in and out of the thing. Of course, she had a great hundreds uh, uh, you know, season and all that. But there are people like Ashti Panal who really come into their own, right? What do you think of that particular move? No, uh, initially, uh, to be frank, I was shocked that, you know, Jamie Ma has not been selected. But, uh, you know, after the uh, uh, coaches and, uh, you know, after uh, listening to what the reasons were, you know, Ayastika Bhatia has done uh, really well specific to this format. You know, the, the 50 overs format when India toured uh, Australia, you know, Ayastika Bhatia just came in and played a very, very bold innings in a crucial chase. And we eventually got to win the match with Snare out of finishing. So, you know, uh, being a left-hander, that also adds... A lot of variety because you can retain that left-right combination. It's not easy for the bowlers, as we can see on television, to bowl to a left-right combination if they have one consistently going on in any batting order. So, Estika Bhatia has been a really good uh, for the Indian team as well. And also, she has had a, an excellent domestic season. So, you know, the uh, selection uh, might have boiled down to this, you know, the two players competing for one spot and Estika and Jemima would have been the uh, players for that number three or number four spot. So, you know, uh, Estika Bhatia being uh, more consistent in the 50 overs format. Yes, I agree. Uh, Jemima has definitely done very well uh, in the 100 and even in the women's Big Bash League also. But you no, know, going forward, this is a 50 over tournament and I definitely think Jemima will be a crucial plan for uh, India going into the future, you know, especially the T20 World Cup. But for this format and, uh, uh, you know, they I think they have made the right choice by picking the player who has been in most recent good form with specific to this format. So, yes, initially I was shocked. But, you know, uh, I definitely feel Yastika Bhatia is a very good pick, pick and uh, she definitely adds a lot to this Indian top order. Sonia, are you, are you concerned the point that Sugula made that... When she's talking about Shilka Pandey, she said experience. And this is the World Cup. So, when we talk about Yastika also, she's had a domestic season and she's done well in Australia. But Jamie has been with the squad now with the Indian team for quite a while. So, are you comfortable with the fact that the selectors have not really you know, worried too much about experience, but just decided that we'll go with form and the current form, even though it's a World Cup? I think, uh, like Sharda said, when we heard about uh, uh, coach and the captain, that press conference, they had this valid reason uh, that if, you know, if a person is in form, you know, I can give an example of what Ruturaj Gaikwad is going through. He is in excellent form in domestic season as well as IPL. Similarly, uh, with the Pacers, you know, Renuka, Singh, Renuka Singh and Meghna, they had done a good job, at, rightly uh, said by Sharda, in the Australia series and uh, in England series as well. They were decent in their performances. So, it's uh, I don't think there should be any problem with you are taking them in when you are considering their form and going ahead with them. <laughs> so now you're there. Okay. We, you know, the other point I wanted to bring in here was when we talk about experience, we talked about two things experience, we talked about strike rate as far as the batting is concerned. So I'm just going through the things and saying that, you know, since the last World Cup, well, the only batter to have a strike rate of just about 70 is only Smithy. So it's something that has been addressed by Mitali. But 
Now we have talked about the strike rate. We have talked about. I I'm going to talk. I want specifically to talk about Smriti. You know, ICC Player of the Year for the second time in her career. Uh, Sharda, take us through. You know what what Smriti has made. You know, to be again another left-hander, surely very elegant uh, batter. Uh, and no, the the expectations of her are huge because you know a Shafali is going to come slam back. But Smriti is the anchor who also has to look at the strike rate because Vitali will take a time. Vitali will, will not go. You know, see. But Smriti has to do both roles. So do you see her pulling it off? Uh, absolutely, no. Uh, since uh, the last, since the twenty seventeen World Cup, I would say, you know, Smriti has been one of the mainstays for uh, India's batting and. now the one thing she, that she does really well you know is to use this power play very very effectively you know she is not bang bang like shefali verma she was at one stage but you know nowadays i feel you know she has been more consistent and she her shot selection has also become a lot lot better now if you see initially her pull shot you know in uh, times like the 2080 world cup her bat came from you know uh, below to you know it just went from here to here so that you know the pull shot goes in the air so but now in 2020 when we saw her playing the pull shot you know the bat is coming from you not know, top to bottom so the pull shot problem she has always worked upon that and you know a lot of her pulls nowadays you know goes on the ground or she tends to pick the gaps correctly so i think she has worked a lot on that uh, there was a weakness of her so you know she is more comprehensive and her she has also started playing a lot straight initially she used to uh, try and flick the ball with whenever the ball comes in from a right hand seamer so she has started playing a lot straight also more to the mid on region so i think she has done phenomenally uh, well for uh, india in the australian tour we, we saw her performing all formats you well know, she got got her made in test 100 in the sole test the pink ball test and also in the odis she was excellent and even in the t20 though she was not able to tee off as well as we expected but she is always there to you know guide the young shafali verma through and also to maintain that 5 and 5.5 uh, run rate throughout the overs so i think she can she is someone who is going to be very very crucial for india's plans you know if she can bat through the first 30 or 35 overs and can stay there with a 100 no 110 120 not out and i think india can definitely uh, notch up scores like 282 90 and definitely put their opposition under a lot of pressure so overall i can say smriti uh, is in an excellent frame of mind right now and uh, you know uh, things have been coming uh, paying off she has worked really hard for the past two years on her technique and uh, you know, yes uh, she will be crucial and india can expect a lot of things from her as well yeah suguna you you went off for a brief while I, I want to ask you about one particular aspect of Bhutali. Given your background, the roles you have played yourself, Suguna, as a leader, uh, what do you think Bhutali brings to the table? You know, as a captain, she's been around for a long time, so she has seen a lot of these youngsters, and she's obviously has to keep the veterans also, you know, in this thing. So, Suguna, what do you have to say about uh, Bhutali as a leader? Oh, Mitali, in fact, is one of the finest players I have seen in her, and I think she is certainly a good leader, no doubt about it. And uh, I'm sure she is going to carry the team through, and she has to carry the team with her. More important, and even if uh, there are any differences, I'm sure she is uh, she is experienced enough to kind of you know set those uh, differences aside and carry her uh, herself and her entire team through. and hopefully we do something very impactful at the world cup but uh, i would like to interfere i mean uh, mention one person who has been ignored in my in my view and that is poonam raut now i do not know why poonam has not been consens- uh, considered because her record is excellent she scored uh, i think around 600 odd runs 480 odd runs in the in 11 matches and 600 odd runs in 14 matches now poonam has been very very effective now if we are talking about mitali shefali and smriti oh. if any one of them do not play in any of these matches in the first 30 overs first 20 overs i don't under, i mean i really am at a loss of words as to why poonam poonam was not considered so mitali yes certainly is an excellent uh, player a very good captain she just has to use that force behind her and say okay this time we're going to win it and uh, bring the world cup i think she can the team can it's a very balanced team definitely despite all else i'm sure they can carry their way through 
Yeah, I mean, I, I agree about Poonam. Though. It was, and she was part of the last World Cup when they made the final and all that. And there's been no real explanation as far as her thing is concerned. But they just basically addressed more of the other uh, exings. But uh, I guess, you know, uh, I, I can just see her stats in front of me. 2021, she's accumulated 295 runs. She got 100. But average of 73. Yeah. But again, the, the, the strike rate... You know, that is what has 58.26 is a strike rate. Maybe uh, that's what's made the, this thing. But because you, you cannot have too many people of that uh, same kind of batting style. So with the Mitali in the mix, you'll have to, I think that's the balance that they have, uh, the team has. It's the same thing that's happening. If you see the Indian ODI team in uh, South Africa recently, everybody was playing, the top three are playing a similar kind of a thing and you, you struggle because of that. I think that's the mix that the selectors have tried for. I would so, just like to add what uh, Shugunanan said that uh, why this team looks more balanced. I feel because because of the there are uh, more all rounders uh, in those teams. You know, there are there is Snehrana, there is Dipti Sharma who can bat and bowl. There is Harman who can bowl. So I think this uh, this will help Mitali also to have more options when you have a bit more all rounders in your team. Yeah, Harman, Harman, that's that's a key, yeah. isn't it, uh, Sonia? Yeah. We've not, she's not done, uh, you know, she's been injured, couldn't play in Australia for the major part of the, she came back only for the T20s. So that's something that uh, India will be hoping that she can do well in these five games and then come back and perform the World Cup. It plays a very crucial role, doesn't she? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Harman, you know, yeah. uh, she she's kind of a player when, you know, it's like we have seen uh, uh, two past two to three years that she's been given the ball when you have to break a partnership. Similar kind of a bowler she is becoming. I'm sure after injury, she'll be back in the World Cup one, uh, as well as the New Zealand series. Yeah, she's also that finisher, isn't it, Shabha? Yeah. That last yeah. 10 over thrust that you need. If you're looking Definitely. for a two, 250 to become a 270, 280, absolutely. Play, you know, she plays a big role. You know, absolutely. You know, she is someone who can utilize that batting power play as well. Uh, a lot of teams don't uh, play a lot of emphasis on that 5 overs batting power play, uh, you know, with only three fielders outside. But Harman is someone who can, with her big shots, you know, make the most of it. And uh, as you said, can provide us that last 10 overs, you know, 80, 85 odd runs in that last 10 overs to get to that score of 280 or 290. And uh, in the WBBL, uh, you know, she was completely in charge of finishing games as well. You know, she did that successfully in more than two or three occasions uh, for the Renegades. She was in fantastic form. And, uh, you know, when the uh, required run rate was even 8.5 or 8.7, she was able to stay calm, talk to her partner, and, you know, take the onus on upon herself to finish the match, which she did. You know, it was very, very impressive. You know, it's not easy, you know, as the required rate keeps jumping up and down. But some having someone with the experience that Harman Preet Kaur has, I think it's definitely going to be very, very crucial for India. And she has also ended up as the player of the tournament for the Big Bash League as well. So she's in red hot yeah. form. And, uh, you know, I sincerely hope that it just she translates. Also had, into uh, I guess 15 to 16 wickets as well. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. She was, you know, she was given the new ball as well in new a couple of games, it. and she picked up Alisa Healy, you know, in the first yeah. over of a game against Sydney yeah. Sixers. So uh, her confidence is really high, and you know, I sincerely hope that it just gets translated uh, into the New Zealand series as well as the World Cup. Yeah, I, I don't see any fitness issues now that she's played an entire. Uh, BBL, but it's BBL. So uh, that's somebody that Indians will obviously look you know, very much into because she she she's the one the balance that we're talking about. She's possibly in the level. She's the perfect uh, thing. Uh, so yeah, I want to you know we talked a lot about Mitali, possibly this being our last uh, outing in India colors. There's talk. She's hinted uh, more than hinted actually that she may retire after this. The other person, interestingly, so, on the so board, I'm, not, you're not very audible, Satish. Surya, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, is better now, ma'am? So, now yeah. is better? Okay. Better. So, I, I was trying to get uh, Sonia to talk to us about Julep. Okay. So, like Mitali, this is possibly her last uh, World Cup. I mean, great contributor, the kind of stuff she's brought in. In Australia, we saw the joy when she finished 
One yeah. match, of course, she you see when she finished the one match, people really you know, the whole team was so happy for her. So yeah. put her career into perspective for us. See, uh, Junan is like you know uh, the what you can say not only in bowling but overall she's been a brilliant team member. I've played with her in Air India, so I've uh, experienced how Julan is in the team when she's playing. You know, she is the one I think one player who will be cheering for you all the fifty overs. Whenever you're even you're batting or even you're bowling, she is the one who will be cheering you up, giving you advice, helping the bowler. So she's been the backbone of you know kind of the bowling unit, and she's done brilliantly well in her career as well. You know, 20 years a fast bowler is playing for India. It's a very big thing and big achievement for her. And I'm even I'm hoping like these both end up winning the World Cup. Yeah, I know. What a, what a swan song it will be for both of them. Actually, I, yeah. I feel that Julian should be batting up the order a bit because she has that batting capacity, you know. Not because she's finished the matches in Australia, but I've seen her bat and she has that, you know. I think maybe just because to, you know, cover up her, you know, load bearing these days, they say of her, of her bowling. But I think Julian should be batting a bit uh, up the order. That's what I feel, you know. She can go and hit those uh, fours as well. She yeah, can uh, utilize her in the middle overs as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I just agree with Sonia. Uh, you know, just coming in, she can come in after Pooja Vastrakar, and uh, she has really been, you know, uh, the nature of uh, an attacking player. We saw in the Australia tour. I think she has really worked on her fitness. She's bowling a lot quicker as well, and her shots were also, you know, just brilliant to watch. The attitude and the way in which she went about right from the first ball it was the word, word go for her. So. Right. Uh, I'll not be surprised if uh, India send up Julan Goswami right after Pooja Vastrakar, you know, to just uh, get so, some quick runs, 20 runs, 25 runs off those three overs. I think she's going to be really crucial with the ball, as we all know, but with the bat also, she can play a defining role for India. Well, I guess that's she, what... she'll, be the, uh, sorry, she'll be the perfect, she's the perfect person to guide these young pacers like Renuka Singh, yeah. Meghna and Pooja Vastrakar. Correct person to guide them before this World Cup and this New Zealand series. In all probability, she'll come back as bowling coach immediately after the match. Playing career is over. But but you know that's that's what this, the beauty of this five match series is that that the Indian team can do these things. Try Julian up the order. Try some beers. You know various things. Uh, ladies, we are coming to the end of our show. I always keep, put my panelists on the mat uh, because that's a tough job that you have. So, the result of this New Zealand series, who do you people want to predict? Sugana, we'll start with you. Uh, score line, five match series. India, what do you think India would do? 3 0, 3 1, 3 2, 5 0. 5 0. Couldn't hear me? I'm I can't you hear to, you. I'm asking you to predict the result of the series. How do you think the series would go? I'm not talking uh, about the World Cup. We'll I'll come to the World Cup next program. I'll say 50-50. I'll say 50-50. Yeah. And uh, I haven't said that. I would certainly wish that they'd come back with the World Cup. But I'm sure they can. If you give it a try, maybe uh, I'm sure we can uh, do well, very well. We have experience. We have the youngsters. We have the spirit. So there's nothing uh, which goes against us. And I can only wish the team all the very best. Since we have a good team, we have a good chance. Let us uh, just go for it. That would be my advice to the team. Yeah, Shabda, you this this series to start with. What do you how do you rate the New Zealand team first of all? Competitive. Uh, yeah, it's it's competitive, but uh, I was surprised to find out the name of uh, uh, Lake Kasparek. You know, who has been really good in the ODA format to be missing. But apart from that, they are a very very batting heavy side uh, and. Uh, you know, they can really cause those upsets with Amy Satterwhite also in very good form and uh, Sophie Devan and Bates also doing very well in the Super Smash. I think uh, New Zealand is going to be a threat uh, for all teams in the World Cup. But uh, with respect to the series, I think 3-2 uh, in favour of India. All right, that's, that's a call. Sonia? Yeah, I, call? I agree with Sharda. I was about to say that only. So 3-2 should be the... Yeah, and the in the conference we heard Mithali saying she started playing her World Cup in New Zealand. So I hope that she uh, ends that winning the World Cup yeah. in New Zealand as well. Yeah, certainly. Right. I hope so. That's right. Yeah. 
sincerely great. hope so. Great, great. We wish the team uh, you know, all, the yeah, all the very best. And it is, it is. Uh, I think by all counts, all of us agree here that it's quite a balanced side. You've got the right mix of experience and youth. Uh, just like on this particular program, we have the right mix of experience and youth. Thank you, all three of you. Absolute pleasure to have you people on board. We will keep troubling you once in a while to join us for future shows. Please keep yourself free. In the meantime, uh, Sonia, Sharda, good luck with your uh, coaching careers Thank and you. whatever else Thank you, you do. And uh, Bob, we shall now call you Bob. <laughs> uh, Thank your, you. Your contribution to society, of course, is, is massive. Let's continue the good work. Uh, Indian Red Cross, obviously, you know, is, is, is a very respected organization, the work that you guys do. So all the best. And thank you for your services. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Ankita, for putting us together. And uh, Shanta, of course, who contacted all of you and got the show going. Thanks, Shanta. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, the audience. Thank you very much for joining us. The thank ICA you very network. much. I wish the team a very, very wish the team all success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you ma'am. Thank you, Satish. Thank you. Bye, Satish. Bye. Bye. Bye.